Hi, this is Brant from TradeGuild.blogspot.com, and it is August 6, 2007. A big day on the market today. Dow had a pretty spectacular day. Um, it was the uh, biggest point gain in the Dow since October 2002. Actually, the S&P, though, was uh, today's best performer. Um, recently, I mentioned the um, possibility of a uh, head and shoulders top in the market forming up. And I think, you know, it's still a possibility here. It wouldn't be a complete, uh, perfectly formed head and shoulders, but, you know, they rarely are. Uh, this would actually be a complex head and shoulders top if it were to uh, play out that way. But thus far, um, it looks like it, it could actually become that. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, I think the rally today was partly an oversold bounce. It was partly Fed expectations. Uh, the Fed meeting tomorrow, the FOMC committee. Um, traders looking to the Fed to make some reassuring statements about their ability to step into the situation um, with uh, the, the credit um, crunch become a macroeconomic event. Um, I think the Fed puts inflation ahead of economic downside risks at this point. Uh, I think traders really are looking to see the Fed make some kind of reassuring comments um, if we don't get something like that, I'd be surprised. But if we don't, I think you could just wipe away today's rally completely. Um, core PCE, which just came out, um, is under 2% year on year, which is within the Fed's comfort zone. Um, basically saying uh, inflation is under control, but I think they're going to probably want to see another month or two of data uh, or that continued trend before they commit to an uh, uh, an eventual rate cut, which might come in October. It looks like the futures are pricing an October cut and another one at the end of the year. Uh, but don't forget that the S&P just made a new high a month ago. Um, it's my opinion. I, I Personally, I don't think the Fed is responsible to be a lifesaver for a bunch of uh, corporations that took on too many high-risk loans in a bubble environment, uh, being real estate, selling all these um, you know interest-only loans and housing sectors that have doubled in three years or in two years a lot of speculative you know every housewife was all of a sudden a, um, a speculative investor in real estate and these guys were financing these high-risk loans and now they're in trouble you know despite Kramer's whining today which I thought was an absolute disgrace I thought he was very disrespectful to the woman on the show um, you know God forbid these corporations these guys making 10 million dollar bonuses should forego their bonuses here because they made some bad business decisions I don't think it's the feds responsibility to bail them out but uh, anyway uh, notably absent today however I think it was largely unnoticed was the lack of Monday morning uh, M&A activity mergers and acquisitions and I think that's a reflection most likely of the wider uh, credit spreads but um, you know, we, we were seeing a lot of Monday morning rallies, uh, partly in due to merger and acquisition activity that was going on on uh, Monday mornings, and, and that was gone. The recent, uh, Don Warden actually from, from Telechart actually pointed out today the recent trend of strong Mondays and weak Tuesdays. Um, again, like I said, I think it's a, a reflection of the merger and acquisition activity that has been present just about every Monday until uh, this week. Anyway, let's take a look at the VIX. Let's see if I get this symbol right. There we go. So the VIX, over 25. Um, and we haven't seen highs like that in the VIX, I think, until uh, 2003. If I step back, I've got to go to a, a weekly chart. There it is, 2003. So the VIX spiked real high. A lot of fear in the market. And um, we saw a nice rally off that. So the VIX is working again after a while here. Uh, another indicator that you might want to take a look at if you have Telechart is their uh, T108. Let me pull that up. T2108. And this is stocks trading above their 40-day uh, moving average. I'm going to get a line chart here and that's in white. And generally speaking when it's above 80 it's a sell signal. When it's below 20 it's a buy signal down there around 18.32. And um, we got that rally today. Let's take a look at the spiders. And um, the spiders, I want to show you something. This is my 3C indicator in pink. Very fashionable. And 
basically on the daily, you know, it, it's pretty much in gear. We see over here a negative divergence at that top, so that played off very nicely. If we look at an hourly chart, however, and this gets kind of interesting, we have um, positive divergence that started forming up um, actually over here in the beginning of August and another one right here at this low. So positive divergence showing some accumulation, surprisingly. And we can see that actually on um, a couple time frames. Here's a half an hour chart. Again, you see the same thing, positive divergence here and here. Um, here's a 15 minute chart, same thing, five minute chart, same thing. And if we look at a one minute chart, it looks like it's losing a little bit of steam. Actually, futures are down tonight. So um, we might see a lower open here. Look at that negative divergence there on the one minute chart. So uh, this might have been a wonder rally, one day wonder, and I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, so let's take a look at a uh, recent idea that was um, put out on the July 10th subscriber list. This is TWM ProShares Ultra Short for the Russell uh, 2000 ETF. And let's see if I can find July 10th here. There's 12th, there's 11th, there's the 10th. So. Um, if we entered this day or whatever, you know, up until today, that's a 21% gain in the TWM ultra short for the Russell. So that was a really nice uh, trade. And uh, I think there's probably gonna be eventually some more upside in that trade. Uh, also notable today was crude oil. Here's late sweet crude down 3.42, uh, $3.42 down 4.53%. Uh, basically on speculation that the weaker um, economic conditions are going to uh, see sluggish demand for gasoline. Uh, I don't know about that one. So keep an eye on crude. A lot of things happen in the world that could change real fast. Uh, let's take a look at a couple ideas here is um, one that's been in the headlines a lot recently, Bear Stearns, with a uh, very nice move today, up 5%. I think you know this is probably still a um, possible short setup here. Um, I don't know if it makes it up this high, but this 122 area would be an interesting uh, area to take a look at this as a short. Uh, I don't think these guys are done. I think uh, they've got significant downside. There's a lot of positions to be unwound there, and um, I think we could see more downside on the brokers. Um, let me pull up another idea here, and these are all ideas I was going to put out on the next subscriber list, but you know, I figured I'd throw out some freebies here. I think um, it's a tough market, and um, if we can help with some ideas, um, you can always hit the tip jar. Okay, so here's GDI. Let me take out this indicator here real quick. Actually, let me leave the indicator. Look at that negative divergence up here at this top, um, a possible head and shoulders type of scenario developing there. Look at this volume over here. So keep an eye on that one. A uh, breach of $40, I'd say, somewhere in that area. That might make a decent short in GDI. Uh, let me see what else I got for you. PRW, this is a position that I'm in. And, um, okay, so you see the symmetrical triangle there. You see 3C just starting to make a, a positive divergence in these uh, lows over here in this base that's forming up and um, here's an hourly version it's pretty much in gear with price on the hourly version half hour version now we're starting to see something here nice positive divergence there in that half hour and even in the 15 minute we're getting a pretty nice positive divergence in PRW highly speculative uh, position you know this is a 41 cent stock but uh, I like it and we've traded this one before back in February Really nice gain back here. That was a, let me see if I can get this here. That was a almost 160% move. So that one can certainly move. Uh, I'm gonna come back with a couple more ideas. I have a few more, but I'm running out of time on this video. So Brant from tradeguild.blogspot.com and I'll be right back.